Hi folks and welcome back. In this video we're going to deviate somewhat from the normal. Neil wants to show you what he had to do to service his life raft. He wanted to do it himself, he wanted to see how it worked, so he did it from start to finish. This video is a little bit different from our normal videos in as much as there's no sailing involved, it's just in the shed. You'll watch Neil as he unpacks the life raft and reassembles the life raft. Is this, if this is something you want to see, then stay tuned. If not, well, we'll see you in the next sailing video. Bye. <laughs> Hi folks, welcome to Adventures of Sea Pigeon. Today we're going to service our life raft. I know this is rather controversial, but in actual fact there's no legal requirement in the UK to carry a life raft if you're under 12 metres. Uh, costs of life raft servicing can be £400. So we're going to take this life raft apart, have a look, weigh the CO2 canister and repack it. I'm hoping that it'll just be all the consumables inside that are going to need replacing. So uh, follow with interest. This is our Eversafe life raft. When I was taking it off, very concerned about the weight, so I used slings from the main halyard to lift it up and take it off the side. The pull cord on the side, obviously essential that this is not pulled because it'll then inflate and I will need a new CO2 canister. So, do not pull this, just joking. <laughs> it's got two plastic bands on here, which I'm now going to cut. Do you have to cut those when you're in the sea? No, these... You don't cut these when you're in the sea, obviously the pressure and the speed of the CO2 canister inflating the life raft will in actual fact overtake these and break it all open. Oh wow, okay. Believe me, I'm curious to see what's inside here. The service date on this was um, 2017, so it's effectively three years out of its service date. So let's see what state is inside. And I'm feeling here there's a little bit of foam packing and a very, very minor damp on top of this. As expected, the life raft is in a vacuum bag, and it's still nice to see that the vacuum is sealed tight on the bag. Here's a stash bag for the cord, so obviously there's going to be a long length of cord before the life raft actually inflates. On here we've got a heat seal running along the edge and on the low I'm getting some damp here. The vacuum bag is still packed absolutely tight which is very impressive so there's no reason why everything shouldn't be immaculate inside this one. I'm now going to take some scissors and cut off the vacuum bag. This at a later date is going to have to be resealed again. Putting my hand in there, absolutely crispy dry and shiny like new. So that's really impressive. That's very good to start with. We'll now take the vacuum bag off. Watch that nice fine leave, babe. Thank you. Here we've got the pull cord attached. Two places. The first place you can see here is the CO2 cylinder, so as this was pulled it would release the pin to open up the CO2 cylinder. So I'm first going to dis disconnect this. And obviously crucial on reassembly to reconnect this. 
taking my time because if I rush it, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have a mad life raft inflating at an incredible speed and thrusting me out of the way and throwing me over the shed. That's now disconnected from the bag. And the bag now goes to this holding piece at the back here with a knot that has also been taped as well. So my next one is to remove this. Now a standard non-slick knot. We all remember that one. The rabbit comes out the hole, goes around the tree and comes back in again. CO2 cylinder is here. It is attached via a bolt to hold it into the bag via this large nut here. First the nut off and then the washer. So important they all go back in this order. One, two, three. Nice little tip, if you tie them all together in the order they come off, when you rebuild it, you'll know which order they came off in. God, it's better than that tender. Interesting there. I know you can see that, but the cotton line that comes through goes round a sealed piece. So I'm going to have to see how this is attached and re-thread it. Completely done, knotted and taped. Now marked, so I know where this has to go. Thank you. piece as you can see now is pulling around and out. So we're now free of our bag which we're going to reuse to reseal. Uh, has a vacuum piece on the top so we can later vacuum the bag. So I'll stand carefully store this. <laughs> I have to say at this point, really important to take a note of exactly how this is folded because as you'll see later on, this was a mission to fold up tidy again. And the final fold. Layers again in a sealed bag. Avamine 25 milligram, 25 milligram tablets to prevent and release seasickness. Trying to find a date on these. These are out of date, expiry date 0718, so I shall be replacing these. Tablets to prevent and release seasickness. I want to find a date on these. These are out of date, expiry date 0718, so I shall be replacing these. Two hole plugs. Torch with Duracell batteries in. No flat as expected. It's got any batteries in it. So we will replace these batteries. Three flares, hand flares red, looking for the expiry date. There we go. Expiry date, uh, January 2018. So I'm obviously going to be replacing these flares. Although I don't wonder about replacing these flares because my grab bag 
as up-to-date flares and now laser flares as well, as I personally think this could now be becoming redundant. Inflation of the life raft was done via a separate air pump using the two valves that were provided on the inside of the raft. These valves are intended for topping up when you're at sea should you have a leak. This shows the location of the valves inside. A close up of the valve with the cap removed. This shows the valves disassembled, worth doing just to check there's no dirt or grit on any of the rubber seals. What we're going to do now is leave this inflated for 48 hours to see if we get any air coming out of it at all. On the inside is a small pipe. This attaches to a clear plastic bag that comes on the inside of the life raft. Outside is the pocket that connects to the small pipe for a rain catcher. This is a small closable hole where you can throw the drogue chute from the inside. On the underside are lead weighted pockets to prevent wind drift. Welcome to part two which is about how I am servicing my own life raft. I'd just like to add that in no way do I endorse covering or servicing your own life raft. This is my personal choice and I'm not advising it for anybody else. Yeah, that's my legal disclaimer. Um, I took my cylinder to be weighed. I took it to a post office and weighed it because I have calibrated digital scales. This has now been weighed, come in with a total weight of 6.0033 kilograms. So that is actually slightly increased. The original weight on here says 5.679 kilograms total weight and I'm now weighing it at 6. Point, well 6 kilograms so there's certainly no loss in this. Cylinder is all good and no leaks. I have replaced the batteries in the torch and spare batteries and awaiting a new set of city sickness tablets so this section is going to be about deflating and packing away and resealing the vacuum bag. See you. Deflation of the life raft is quite simple. Very, very important is to remember to reseal these when you put them back on once you've vacuumed down the life raft. So remember to close them up again. Reinsertion of the COT cylinder. As we said earlier, this was weighed on calibrated scales at a post office and there has been absolutely no loss in the weight of the cylinder. Nice and careful with this, we don't want to be pulling this pin here. Take your time. The next stage is the fold. I'm going to check my valves. One, closed, closed, and this valve is closed, tied in, and my flares at the back are also tied in. So this is a bit I've been regretting now.
the attachment cord which goes in the front here, goes around the back, inside the back, and as you remember, it has to go around this loop here. A fiddly job, but as you can see that cord is now pulling through. And this will attach at the other end. Again, non-slip knot and tape taped up afterwards. Next step is applying the deployment cord. And taped again. Using Gorilla waterproof glue or tape, or using Gorilla waterproof tape. Now the CO2 cylinder is inside, attached by both hoses. I can do this up this will retain the CO2 cylinder now attach the CO2 deployment cord Bear Grylls has a great saying if you don't do no knots do lots so I'm going to do quite a few left over right, right over left, a few boy skates. That's lots and lots of reef knots. We now have our deployment bag. I'm going to give some slack to that. I don't want it pulling out. And now the dreaded folding, which I have to say I have been worried about. folding of the life raft, getting it inside the plastic bag and getting it inside the box was an absolute nightmare. Multiple attempts were made and it was not easy to get in. To compound it all, once I got it inside the plastic bag, I could not get the plastic bag to seal. I tried various glues, heat guns, but I could not get it to seal. I used a vacuum cleaner to vacuum it down and it just would not hold its vacuum. Just to compound the thing as well, all of the fun I spent getting it back in the box was lost. I've no idea what happened to that video, but trust me, getting it into the box was an absolute nightmare. In hindsight, there was nothing wrong with it, but it was peace of mind and I needed to know that the CO2 cylinder was working and weighed the right amount. Ideally, I would like to have replaced the vacuum bag, but nobody will sell you the vacuum bag. All you get is lectures on how and why you should not service your own life raft. But my personal view is I want to know how it works. I want to do it myself to know it's done right. I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of criticism and comments from people, but please give me some comments and what are your thoughts on servicing your own life raft. This was my personal choice and I would not recommend it to anybody else. That's my legal disclaimer. Once again, my apologies for losing the final stage of getting in the box, but to be honest, that was an absolute embarrassment. Needless to say, it got in, but the amount of beeps and swear words in getting into that box, oh my. Uh, hopefully, see you next time. Bye bye.